is a great honor and a privilege to introduce Hannah Aliza Omer and um, just a very brief bio uh, about um, our, our very, very special uh, guest that we're going to be having on the Zoom. Hannah Aliza was born in 1947 in a family of Holocaust survivors and is a second generation survivor. You grew up grappling with the questions of faith and identity in communist Czechoslovakia. Uh, you immigrated in 1967, and you set the stage for a long maturation on the personal, artistic, and social levels, specializing what you went to the Tzadal Academy of Arts in Jerusalem, and you specialized in graphics, and you worked as an illustrator and a graphic designer. And I just want to mention, just to get into the Tzadal, is a massive feat in itself because um, the numbers are very limited and they take the cream of the cream, they take the top students. So Hanaliza, by being accepted into Batsalal, that was a really major achievement. In 1983, you became a member of the Ain Hood Artistic um, Artist Village. And um, here you produced many drawings on the movements of the human body. They were inspired by the work on yoga as you were also a yoga teacher in the nearby community and in the educational centers. And on a personal level, in 1983-84, I came to Israel on a visit, and we actually went to visit Ainhood. And it was really beautiful seeing all the sculptures outside. I remember it very vividly. It was very, very inspirational, and it was very special to be there. In 95, you were commissioned by Dr. Yitzhak Heitman from the Jerusalem to paint his visions of the heavenly Jerusalem. With his inspiration, you painted major paintings which expressed through visual symbolism the age old yearning of humanity for redemption and peace. In 1999, uh, after finishing the Heavenly Jerusalem series, besides working as a freelance illustrator and a yoga teacher, um, you initiated an ecological a community project in earthly Jerusalem. Um, in 2005, you, you began consciously to relate to your Judaic cultural and ancestral background, creating a cycle of paintings, um, roots, uh, Shorashim, in which you dealt with the painful subject of the, of the Shoah, of the Holocaust. And in 2006, you created two paintings for the Beacons in the Dark conference in the Hebrew University, illustrating the major um, Holocaust rescue activities. And then you illustrated as well, the memories of Yosef Bigun, who was um, one of the refusings of prison of Zion in Russia, which was then the Soviet Union. From 2012, you've lived in Prague and um, you continue to have uh, inspiration um, with your ongoing creativity. Today, you're a grandmother, Baruch Hashem, um, and this fact spurs you uh, on with your creative and social activity for connecting between the earthly and heavenly realities. And you have done numerous exhibitions, and there we can find them on Facebook. And uh, um, people, you know, I hope you can mention a few of the exhibitions, but you've done various exhibitions in Czechoslovakia, here in Israel. And I was very fortunate to be at one of your exhibitions in Yushalayim a few years ago, where I met you personally. And it was a tremendous honor and a privilege to have met you there as well. I think Yosef Begun was there as well that evening. And it was a very, very, very special and inspirational talk that you gave. And um, it was a great honor to have met you. And for me, it is a tremendous privilege and really a tremendous honor as well to have you tonight. And without any further ado, uh, Hannah Lisa, it gives me such a, such a switch, such an honor to introduce you. So thank you. Thank you. So, Hanalisa, if you can explain about your family and Shorashim and your roots. Okay. So, can I begin? Please, please, yeah. Okay, good. So now I am beginning with this painting. I painting uh, painted in two thousand five, and uh, it is uh, from the series My Roots. Roots. I have a series of paintings, which I will show some of them uh, uh, in, later now. 
So this is called the hidden scrolls. And uh, here I painted the scrolls they found in Qumran, which, the, which uh, were hidden in the caves by people who were on the run from the Romans uh, who lived uh, in the caves there uh, 2000 years ago. Uh, and underneath you can see the prayer shawls uh, which the Nazis took uh, in the Holocaust. Uh, uh, they collected all the prayer shawls from uh, those uh, Jewish uh, men whom they murdered. So I connected the two uh, Holocaust events together in this one painting. So I am showing it in the beginning now. Uh, this uh, same painting I put, in, this is a flyer for exhibition, which should have been last year in the Holocaust Museum in Slovakia, which is the country where I was born in a small town near Hungarian borders. Uh, Duna Iskastreda in Slovakia and Duna, Duna Sardohai in Hungarian. Anyway, uh, this Holocaust Museum is nearby this my uh, hometown, Sarad. And uh, unfortunately, this exhibition was uh, cancelled because of the pandemic. So I am just showing this poster now, which is uh, actual as well. Hopefully, <laughs> after the pandemic soon ends, uh, the exhibition will happen there. Now, uh, I can talk about my forefathers through pictures. And in this picture, in this uh, here, we can see there were Pictures we found, uh, my parents found from the abandoned uh, houses, which they found uh, after they, by miracle, staying alive by miracles, they got back to their home, uh, homes and they found uh, some pictures. Here you can see my grand grandparents, whom of course I didn't uh, know. Uh, they were somewhere from Moravia, which is part of Czechia. Uh, my grandparents perished in the Holocaust as well. Of course, I didn't know them. And from them, unfortunately, there we have no pictures. Here, uh, this is my grandfather from my father's side. And here we can see him. I don't know if you can see him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was serving in the First World War in the army in Russia. And here he is with my grandmother, with his wife, who both of them perished in the Holocaust as well. Uh, now, these two grand grandparents, uh, they, they are from my mother's side. Uh, now, here we have pictures of my grandmother and my small father and his sister who perished as well. Here she is uh, before the Holocaust. Here we have pictures of my father. He was born in uh, 19, 19, 1913, before the second, before the First World War, uh, and here he is when his father was already serving as a soldier in the First World War. The same of my mother's uh, father was serving in the First World War as a soldier, so they didn't know their fathers for at about four or five years. So the suffering of my parents was not only the Holocaust, it began in their early childhood already. Here in this picture, we see the five 
uh, brothers of, of my mother, she, here she is a small baby, and uh, her sisters and two brothers who perished in the Holocaust. And uh, this is taken at, uh, before the end of the First World War, before their father came back from, from the world alive. So it was already a miracle, miracle that their fathers came back. Uh, so uh, this is about uh, my parents and grandparents, which I can show through photos, which remain. Now, in this one, we have pictures from my hometown, Dunajska Streda, Duna Serdahal. And this uh, town was called, uh, before the Second World War, Small Jerusalem, because there were many, many, it was uh, very Jew, uh, Jewish learning and uh, yeshivot, and you can see here, uh, Jewish schools, here are the boys, here are the girls, and here is a reform where the boy, you can see, can you see it, this pic these pictures, is it big enough? It's very good, Annalisa, we can see it very well. Yeah. Very good. And here we can see just a picture I found on the web of uh, Jewish musicians in uh, Slovakia. Uh, you can see they have no, maybe you can see you, they have no shoes, but uh, they were musicians as well. <laughs> so here are these schools. Uh, we, we got uh, in my family al album from my father's house, father's home, we found these pictures. Okay, now here, these pictures were taken uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, in, it is uh, the Holocaust Memorial Day in my hometown. Uh, here you can see all the names of the Jews which were murdered from my hometown. It is the memorial uh, stone at the entrance of the uh, cemetery. Here we can see the tombstones. It is a very big cemetery. My father, as his grandfather, they were, their family business was making tombs. So there are many tombs my father and my grandfather made as well in this cemetery, for instance. Here we can see the ceremony, a uh, picture of the ceremony. Uh, of the Holocaust Memorial. And here as well, there came from the town, uh, the uh, Hor, Hor, Hor. They were singing beautifully. Uh, oh, sorry, this is the next picture already. Uh, I will come back to this, uh, to this uh, ceremony uh, in a few pictures later. Here we can see uh, Bratislava, the great synagogue, uh, which still stood in my, when I was studying there in the school of, uh, of uh, art design. It was standing. Uh, my hometown, Dunajska Streda, is very close to Bratislava, which is the um, uh, main the, the the main town main city in Slovakia, Presburg in German, and here we we see in this picture how the communists they uh, just destroyed it because they wanted to build the <laughs> they they already wanted so much the connection with the West the communists, in spite uh, of uh, that there were uh, borders with electric wires, but still they wanted to build a road from Vienna uh, to Bratislava, and they had to do it. It was just crazy. Communists did terrible things. You will see later. And uh, they destroyed the synagogue. Of course, they didn't destroy the cathedral, but the synagogue did <laughs> destroy it uh, in the 60s after uh, I was already in Israel. 
So my brother asked me to make a picture, to paint a picture of the synagogue. And this is one uh, picture which I made, painted a few years ago. Uh, Hannah Lisa, can I ask you, when, when this synagogue, I mean, it survived the Shah, it survived the Holocaust. Yeah. And unfortunately, in communist times, it was destroyed. Was there a lot of... I um, think with the Holocaust, yes. Was, was there a lot of opposition when they decided to, to destroy the synagogue, to make way for the road? Were the people, Sorry, I didn't hear. Were there, were there, was there a lot of opposition? Were, Oppos people, uh, were people upset, were they against the decision to destroy the synagogue? Uh, if there was opposition to yeah. destroying? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Through the communists, you could never do any opposition. Wow. Yeah, you will see they destroyed the big synagogue here. No, you see uh, the great synagogue in my hometown. OK, now I see I show you this was the big synagogue in my hometown. It had a place for thousands of people. You see, and here it is another picture. It was on the main road of my hometown. Uh, here you see a different houses as well in my hometown. This was an old age house and this is a small synagogue as well. And here is a book which my uh, friend from childhood brought out just a year ago. Kornfeld Tibor, he's still living in my hometown, and he says there was once a, a Jewish town, Dunaserdai. This is in Hungarian, because in my hometown, my uh, mother tongue is uh, Hungarian. It is on, on the Hungarian border. It is a very complex history of this uh, area. I will not get into that. But uh, in the Nazi times, uh, it belonged to, to it, they gave it back to Hungary. Uh, after the First World War, it became Czechoslovakia. But Nazi times, it became Hungary as well. So, uh, and today that there are open borders, the Hungarian uh, tongue is coming back. And Hanalisa, when when was the synagogue destroyed? Where was it? No, when when was it destroyed? During the Shoah or in the when I still remember it standing. I think it was in the end of the fifties when I maybe fifty five no maybe because I was still a small child. It was still standing. It was a little. Uh, 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 damaged by a bomb, <laughs> the Americans dropped one bomb on my hometown. It fell on the synagogue. So, but it didn't destroy it uh, entirely. Uh, so it could have been rebuilt, but uh, the communists uh, decided to destroy it. What a pity! What a I still <laughs> remember it was standing. And near that was the mikve. Uh, anyway, uh, my uh, peer from my childhood, who is, uh, we have to pray for him because now he is uh, fighting with the uh, COVID, uh, Tibor Kornfeld, who wrote this uh, book about uh, our Jewish hometown. Uh, he asked me to make a model of the synagogue. So here it is. And uh, here the model, and uh, I made another model of the small synagogue. And here you can see the pictures on this exhibit, which uh, I was asked uh, to do on, on this uh, event, uh, which I showed you before of the Holocaust Memorial, 75th Holocaust Memorial Day. Uh, so it was part of that Memorial Day. Uh, okay, so this, yeah. So this I am just showing about uh, my parents. 
And now maybe I go on, if you don't have more questions about it, I can go on to my route through my paintings. Please, if you can go on. Okay, so here is uh, one of, it is the first picture uh, painting of uh, the series of uh, roots, which is called Family, Family Heritage. And I wrote a little text to it. I will read it. In the background of the synagogue of, uh, uh, of this, of, Synagogue inter synagogue's interior. This was the interior of this uh, big synagogue of my hometown, which I showed before. Uh, so on the background are my grandparents and my father. These I painted according to the photos which I showed you before. Uh, they perished in Auschwitz. In the center sits my father, is as a small child. In 1918, maybe, I think this painting, yes. In the center, yeah, in the frightening smoke looms over the horizon in the window, you can see. And uh, underneath you, uh, there are the tombstones uh, from my uh, hometown cemetery, which I showed you before. Here are the witnesses, the women on the women's balcony. And uh, here, this uh, is reminding the Holocaust, where on it is written the prayer, my God, the soul you gave me is pure written over the mass grave. So with this picture, I uh, connected uh, all these feelings I had with uh, the historical uh, events and uh, photos which remained, our personal photos, family photos. Uh, can I go on? Please, if you can go on, it's, it's incredible. And it is, it's just unbelievable. Oh, thank you. So here, uh, this uh, second picture, I called Kadosh, 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 which uh, I wrote here on, on the borders, Kadosh, 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 Kadosh. Holy, holy, holy. It is one of the prayers in the Siddur. Uh, it is back to the source as well. Uh, back to the source is the trail of my ancestors, hidden in my body's memory. I am healing them in me, me in them. So here in these pictures, in this painting, uh, we can see uh, the two, how do you say in English, like in theater, you open. It's, it's our curtains, the, the two yes. curtains or pillars. Two uh, lions. And uh, one is the lion of Yehuda and the other is the lion of Czechoslovakia. They have a, a symbol of lion as well. Uh, in the center, there is a table with Shabbat candles lit. And here is my brother, and this is me. And uh, it is the Shabbat uh, table. Uh, and uh, it is made over the uh, field of corn with flowers, which uh, in my hometown area in the fields, it, there was a lot of corn. And that was my, that is my childhood memory as well. Uh, and here are my mother and father. My father was uh, very uh, very much uh, knowledgeable in Judaism. He was a yeshiva booker before the war. Uh, and uh, we received uh, a lot of the tradition from my parents. They were, of course, traditional uh, 
and uh, keeping even after they came uh, back from the Holocaust, was unfortunately without faith, but the tradition stayed still. Annalisa, can I ask you, do you know which yeshiva your father went to? My father's what? Yeshiva, the name of the yeshiva or where he went? He was st studying in my hometown. I, I don't know which one of the yeshivas in my orthodox yeshivas, which I showed you the pictures. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, my brother knows more about such details. Maybe if you do some interview with him as well, he can maybe answer you this question. That I don't know. Uh, well, I just uh, know more general and with different aspect. Here I painted uh, in the background. Uh, this is, uh, I imagined my grandparents from my mother's side of whom we don't have, unfortunately, photos left, and of my father's side and their parents, I imagine their parents and their parents and theirs, into the infinity, their souls go out. And there are many, many, many uh, grand, grand, grandparents. So that's how I connected to my uh, heritage through this painting. Uh, now here, in this painting, I, it is imag I imagine the family of my mother before the Holocaust. Uh, their parents, her mother and uh, her father, my grandparents, whom here I imagine because I have no photos of them. They were eight children uh, of whom miraculously all the five daughters came back and uh, the youngest brother, the two brothers perished and the grandparents perished as well. And they, they come from a small village uh, in uh, South Slovakia as well. They were Hungarian speaking as well. Uh, my grandmother, she uh, came from Piestiani. Uh, she probably knew less Hungarian because her parents came from Moravia. It, it was uh, Czech speaking. So in uh, Central Europe, all these nations were connected uh, though on entirely different languages because before the First World War, it was all Austro-Hungarian Empire, as you probably heard. And uh, uh, there were many, many uh, countries, uh, languages. So my language, mother tongue is Hungarian. I went to Slovak schools and my parents spoke German between themselves if they didn't want us to understand them, for instance. So uh, there were already three languages in my childhood, which uh, I uh, had to know. <laughs> And uh, today I, I don't speak Hungarian anymore, so I don't sp speak it so well. I can speak it, but I read it and understand everything, of course. <laughs> and they are entirely different languages. Uh, and here in these paintings, I uh, made uh, the portraits of my mother's family. Uh, in uh, the composition of the tree of life uh, uh, spheres. So the kingdom, she is the grandmother, the, the crown is the grandfather and the sisters, my mother, brother who perished, perished. 
and the sisters. They are their family. They came to Israel uh, in '47. Only my mother and father stayed in uh, Czechoslovakia, in communist Czechoslovakia, because my father didn't want to leave his home house, the house. Uh, I came to Israel in 1967, when I was 20, and uh, with my mother to visit uh, my, our, my aunts or sisters. And I stayed to, in Israel. My mother came back to Czechoslovakia because my father and brother still were there. And uh, then eventually in the 70s, she came to Israel after the communists, uh, or it was, I think, yeah, it was in the 70s, when the communists already were not so strong and it was possible to go out as well. So very complex, very complex. Anyway, uh, the family of my aunts uh, today, Baruch Hashem, thank God, there are many, many children, Galan children all over the world, Baruch Hashem, even in America, in Israel, in Europe, all over. Uh, so from this family, which uh, the boy, the two, he was a uh, yeshiva bucher, and of uh, this uh, uh, brother, we don't know much. We don't, we, there was no, there is no picture left. Okay, so here, this painting is of my neighbor. His name was Emil Weiss. I'm reading, Emil Weiss was our neighbor. The Nazis shot, shot him into a Mars grave with his family. His family perished there, his wife and children, but he miraculously stayed alive, alive alone. I remember him playing very sad melodies on his violin. So he he had only one eye. Somehow he got out of this out of this mass grave, came back to his hometown, and uh, he was one of my childhood memories. Memories, and I painted him in this uh, graveyard, which is in my hometown. I call this painting broken violin. Here, this small boy is as if one of his, his small boy, as if. I, I am very much uh, touched now, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you can. And, uh, Annalisa, it's very emotional what you've done. It's extremely, emo it's extremely emotional. Um, your paintings are so, they are very, very emotional, your paintings. Thank you, know, you. you can feel, you, you feel what you're saying. It's, Thank you. It's, it's exceptionally special. Okay, uh, so here is my father. On the background is the big synagogue. Uh, here you can see maybe a small child. He was his little brother. Uh, he perished in the war. And uh, I remember my father, sometimes it caught him uh, the sadness for his little brother. Uh, he was singing. Uh, here on this heap, you, I don't know if you can see, there is a cock. And I, I put it here because uh, there is, in Hungarian, there is a song 
which says solo kokoshmar, <laughs> the cock is already calling in translation. It is a song, solo kokoshmar. Anyway, this song, the Jews from Hungary were singing that the cock is already calling. It is going to be daybreak soon. And this song gave them strength to keep on in the Holocaust. So that's why I put this cock on here. And uh, our uh, friend Larry uh, Pfeffer, he sings very beautifully. He can sing this song very beautifully. Uh, yeah, so if you ask him, <laughs> he can sing it to, him, to you. So here I wrote, my father, the synagogue in Dunajska Streda destroyed, well, I wrote in the war, but by the communists uh, in the war as well. That child here was my father's small brother, perished in the deportation. Father used to bless us every Friday evening, my most beautiful memories of childhood with him when he used to bless us, with the priestly blessing, with his hands on our head. So that was one of my most beautiful memories with him. He had all the time his sadness. He didn't speak much about what he went through. He kept it inside. Here, but here is my mother I painted. And uh, I painted her on the, as if on, on, on the main street of my hometown. Here you can see the great synagogue. And uh, here are the stones and there is blood seeping through the stones. And uh, my mother, when I, she was older already, she was keeping uh, the count of her birthdays, how long she lived Baruch Hashem until she was 95. Because you know, um, my, uh, they had such a hard life in uh, all the time. So they were very strong. All, all of her sister, they, they stayed until Baruch Hashem, thank God, very old age. Uh, so my, my mother still saw her grand grandchild, my son's children, my daughter's children. She still saw them. So that's why I painted her with a birthday cake. <laughs> because uh, her grand grandparents, we have uh, photos, we came to visit her on her birthdays when she was 90, 94, and so on. When she was older already, she was already on wheelchair. Uh, but uh, still, she kept on incredible. Incredible spirit. Anyway, uh, here I read. In the main street of my hometown is she with a birth, the birthday cake. On a card with all her possessions, she hoped to say it from not the Nazis. Uh, well, uh, when she was a young woman with her sister, they opened a Sue, how do you say, they sew, made sewing? Sewing. So, sewing. Yeah. Uh, sewing. 
yeah, they, they, that's how they may, may try to make their dowry to get married because they were very poor. And of course, uh, they, uh, unfortunately, I don't know if unfortunately, fortunately, they didn't succeed because the Nazis would take it away if they had did make family. Anyway, they try uh, in 43, in Hungary, it, uh, it was very complex. Uh, they had to go get out of Slovakia to Hungary to save uh, everything they had. Very complex history. Uh, so she is here as if uh, going to Dunajska Streda with all her possessions and there she, they continued. Uh, the, the sewing business uh, for one more year uh, under the Nazis, though it was not allowed, they did it in secret. Uh, so very complex. And uh, here I, I painted her as a small baby. Her baby soul is hovering above, about, above. She is describing about her life. She was talking, she was talking about her history, about what happened. When I was a child, she, she was talking about her stories uh, over and over again. And it was very painful for me as a child to listen to it, uh, what she went through. And she talked about her childhood as well. So I was well acquainted with her story, stories. And she described these, uh, uh, when she came already to Israel, she wrote her memories in Hungarian, a very small book. Uh, I think Larry Pfeffer has this book. I hope to send it or give it to you sometime, I hope. Uh, we translated it into English. Uh, in, uh, they translated it in uh, Budapest, Hungary, Holocaust Center. And it is translated, I translated into Hebrew as well. And now it is translated into Czech as well. It appeared in uh, a Czech, in, in Czech, in the magazine of uh, uh, Beit Simcha in Prague, uh, Prague uh, Reform Community, Jewish community. Uh, in, in Czech, they translated it. So now it is in uh, four languages. I illustrated her memories. Uh, and uh, here, in this one, she's describing how in childhood uh, they, they try to make their living by making soda. And she uh, and her sister, a small little girls, they had to carry these heavy soda bottles. It, and there was this peasant, he was always drunk and uh, he had his own soda business. He was his... Uh, how do you say, he, he wanted to steal it to, from them. So the, here I am illustrating, uh, I was, I illustrated this, what she is describing in her memories. Here in this one, she described how they were sewing in with her sister in, on this, of course, uh, hand sewing machines still. And here, like symbol, here is this uh, wheel. Of course, uh, the Nazis took everything away. They had to leave everything there. So that's what it is symbolizing here. And the needle. It is symbols. So here, I, I am not showing all my illustrations, just some. 
Here, uh, uh, this is illustrations from Auschwitz. It is just kind of collage according to what she's describing. Uh, it is more impressions and my feelings. It was very difficult for me to do these illustrations, uh, illustrations, you can imagine, from the emotional side. I had to go through to, to recapitulate what she went through in my own soul. Through these illustrations, through my artwork, in fact, I am recapitulating the history of my people, of, of my heritage. And in fact, this is helping me personally to heal myself as well. So in myself, I am healing myself through my art. I am healing myself and my heritage, hopefully, as well. So here I was, uh, I am illustrating heavy, heavy, heavy things. Here, the death, uh, death march uh, uh, from uh, Auschwitz. Uh, she and her sisters, uh, they had a choice to stay in Auschwitz or to go, go on transport to Berlin and uh, Ravensbrück. So they choose to go, oh, sorry. They choose to go uh, to Ravensbrück to Berlin because uh, it was it was uh, like they choose to go there and that's why they probably survived in Auschwitz they wouldn't survive but in the end uh, they had to go through the death march as well uh, which is described she is not much describing because even for her it was so heavy to talk about it in her book but she is just mentioning it uh, how how they had to go through it and here in this one she is describing as well a terrible memory uh, after the war, when she came back, she met a beautiful Jewish man whom she wanted to marry. She was already 32 uh, after when she came out of the Holocaust and she wanted to make a family at last. But he went through the Holocaust as well and he told her what, she, what he went through in the Holocaust. Even I don't want to talk about it now. I don't know if you would want me to talk about it. Annalise, if you feel comfortable, I, I, it would be, if, if it's not too difficult for you, if you could. Maybe I should, because it is a testimony. Sorry, here is my memo, my family WhatsApp. I am closing it. <laughs> anyway. Uh, it is now. We have a family WhatsApp here in Prague. Baruch Hashem. Anyway, I think I have to switch to this terrible thing as well. So it is uh, a testimony. Uh, so this young man, he told her that uh, what he had to do in the in Auschwitz was to throw the small babies into the gas chamber over the head of the people who were there, over the heads of the people who were there already. Yeah. So when uh, my, my mother told me about it, so she told me that she, when she heard him like, speak about this and she wanted to marry him, 
But when she heard him to talk about this, she felt so terrible she, that she could not marry him. So that's why she didn't marry him. It's understandable, Hannah-Lisa. It's, yeah. it's understandable. It's such a, yeah. such a trauma, such an unimaginable, yeah. unimaginable thing, trauma that he was put into. Yeah. So that's a destiny, you know. That's, that's called destiny, Gora in Hebrew. So afterwards, uh, that's why she afterwards married our, our father. Who, whom she met in Dunaiska Streda. And uh, she lived here uh, with him. Uh, it was very difficult marriage because he was depressive and he had a lot of anger, suppressed anger and not so suppressed and depression as well. So it was very difficult marriage and for us children as well. So that's, uh, that was in many second generation uh, Holocaust. I mean, uh, my generation uh, uh, children who were born after the Holocaust to these parents, we went through such things as well. Uh, so we have to had to work through that uh, for a long time. And in Israel, there is this institute for psychology, uh, psychological help of second generation Holocaust uh, for Holocaust survivors. Probably you know about this institute. So I didn't go for help there. <laughs> Uh, because I learned how to help myself through my art, through, through my creativity. So Lisa, can I ask you, with your father, did, did you ever ask him questions about the Shoah, wh where, where he was sent to or which no, camps he was in? talk about him. He, it was not possible. Did he speak to your mother? Did your yes. mother know his story? Sometimes, uh, I don't know how did he we know about his brother and sister. Sometimes he was uh, crying about them. And he has his another brother still living on, our uncle. Uh, and maybe, I, I don't remember, maybe he told me about it or my mother told us about it. His uh, history, in fact, I don't know. How did we know about his history? Um, and Hannah Lisa, can I ask you, when your mother told you, yes. did, did your father not object that your mother was telling you about her, about her difficult, you know, about her time in the Shire? Your father didn't object to her telling the children. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your uh, question. Did your father object ever to your mother relating to the children about her experiences in the Shire? No, 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 no. He objected to her in other things, <laughs> but <laughs> not in this. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like, for instance, uh, my father was doing his business uh, uh, of tombstones uh, through the communist times. And uh, of course, the communist made his private uh, business uh, like uh, communist uh, owned business. But he, my father went on doing like buying stones privately. And uh, like before uh, he did, but the, the communists caught him and uh, put him in jail for that. Wow. He was for two years when I was 12. When, when I was 10, until when I was 12, he was in jail and uh, for, for doing business. And uh, 
I remember my mother told him, be careful. Mm. And he was very angry because of that with her, that she is telling him, be careful. That's, that's what I, uh, is an instance when he was objecting to her, for instance. So uh, she, she was right. He should have been careful <laughs> with the communists, you know. You had to be very careful with the communists and you could never be careful enough. And Hanaliza, did you ever show your mother any of your paintings? Did she ever know that you were doing yeah, this? Sure. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we may unfortunately we made her book. We we print we printed uh, her book when she was still alive, and uh, I gave her, her this book uh, into her hand. I, she was already ninety four already. And she was not talking anymore, but she got it into her hand and she saw it. So she, she got it. She saw it. And uh, of course, other things she saw as well. Of my art, uh, she came from, from a very simple, my parents came from very simple Jewish families. I mean, as if uneducated, though they were very intelligent. My mother had to go to work as a servant when she was 14. She didn't make her schools, but when after, when she was already over 60, she finished her studies uh, still in Slovakia when she was staying. She finished studying and she wrote her memories. She was very intelligent as well. So, but uh, they were simple people, very down to earth, practical. Uh, and she didn't uh, relate very much to my artwork. Uh, yeah. But, but she must have been very, very proud of you. Yeah, uh, well, in fact, uh, she, she, well, probably she was, but she helped me very much, in fact. So I can tell you that uh, uh, she helped to that, that I got to study when I was 14, 15. I went to study in this industrial art school in Bratislava. She, she managed to, to give money to, to these teachers there so they would accept. It was communist times and they didn't accept Jews. So, but for money they did. So she was so clever how to arrange and fix things, you know. She learned, uh, she learned how to be clever, how to go through heavy things in life. And in Holocaust as well, she is describing how they were stealing bread and so on in the uh, camps and so on, how, how to manage to survive. So she, in fact, uh, uh, succeeded uh, bringing me to study art in uh, Bratislava, when, uh, where I went to live in an uh, in internet. Uh, it, it is uh, 50 kilometers from my hometown. So I went uh, uh, there to live in a, a school, uh, dormitories, it is called. And I studied there for four years until I was 19. Uh, so it was very good for me. So in fact, she did appreciate and she uh, stood behind me. With my, she, they saw that I had this talent for, for
for art. Okay, so okay, so here this is uh, the magazine uh, of the Beit Simcha memories of, of my reform community in Prague. That's her portrait. And uh, it came out in six installments in this magazine in Czech. Uh, yeah, very good. Here in this, uh, this is a page uh, from an article in the magazine of Itze in Prague. Itze is uh, International Christian Embassy Jerusalem. I don't know if you heard about it. I actually have, and um, I have as patients the head of the Christian Embassy. Yeah. I'm very associated, you know, um, they do amazing work, and I have a close connection with the, they invite me every uh, Feast of Tabernacles to, to the events. It's very special. Yeah, so in Prague, they are very active. Uh, yeah, wonderful, uh, and uh, they are making every year they make march against anti-Semitism, for, for instance. And when I had my first exhibit in Prague in uh, 2007, I think it was, uh, so they wrote an article about my art in their magazine about this exhibition. <clears throat> uh, so it is, uh, there are really, here in uh, Central Europe, the Holocaust is, memory is still very alive, much more than in Israel. Here, for instance, uh, uh, this uh, is uh, a photo from my exhibition in the Museum of Theresienstadt uh, in 2010. I had a big exhibition. Uh, as you probably know, Theresienstadt was the concentration camp for the uh, Czech Jews. Uh, so there is a big museum there today. The whole, yeah, a big museum. It is north of the Prague. So I had a, they made a big exhibition of my art there. Uh, so I go on now with uh, some of my artwork. Please, please, if you could. Uh, well, this is a photo of my exhibition. Probably you saw it in Jerusalem. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, in, it was in the Fuchsberg Center of Conservative Judaism in 2014. You gave a presentation as well. You, um, um, and Elisa, you actually gave a talk. We, we you, you gave a talk at the same time and we videoed your talk. Yeah, yeah and here uh, I will show a bit more. Uh, here uh, I exhibited uh, photos of my illustrations to the memoirs of Josef Began, who was a con conscientious objector uh, in uh, Soviet Union, Jew, Jewish, yeah, uh, he was a Jew who, who objected uh, to not being able to, to uh, go to Israel. And he was for 10 years uh, detained in Sibir for that. So when at last he got to Israel, uh, he, he wrote his memories and he is giving, uh, he is still alive and well, Baruch Hashem in Jerusalem. And uh, he is still, he is giving uh, uh, talks about his uh, life. And uh, in his talks, 
he's showing as well some of these these illustrations which I made for his memories as well. Uh, well, here, here there are the illustrations for my mother's book from that exhibition. This uh, is an illustration which I made uh, two, well, a year and a half ago for the uh, memoirs of uh, Josef Begun. He asked me again to work with him. And this is about, uh, uh, yeah, it is from Kiev. It is from Kiev uh, and uh, it is, uh, Yeah, it is like they were coming to to give a, a, in Treblinka, I think, near Kiev. Uh, they are uh, the Jews were uh, there came uh, to commemorate uh, the the Holocaust of the Jews there, and there are the KGB watching them. You know, it could have been in Babi Yar. Yeah, oh, sorry, Babi Yar. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's it. I mixed up. Yes, Babi Yar. Uh, near Kiev. So it is a very complex illustration and uh, we did it uh, through talks uh, and uh, because I am here and he is there, so I did it according to his instructions. He asked me now again for more illustrations, so hopefully we shall do some more. It is not easy <laughs> to make such illustrations. Uh, well. well, here, this illustration I made for the request of our friend Larry Pfeffer, which was uh, uh, published in Jerusalem Post 2018. And in fact, uh, it was on Purim, for Purim, uh, because it is uh, the death of Stalin. Stalin was, uh, Stalin died in 19, I think, 53? 1953, yeah. It was Purim, the miracle of Purim. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> 53. And uh, yeah, there is a complex history about his death. Uh, and it, it happened before he succeeded uh, deporting all the Jewish uh, uh, doctors uh, in the Soviet Union. So here is an illustration for that historical complex uh, event of Stalin's death. Uh, here, this uh, here I, I will show the another an, uh, the second painting which I made as well at the request of Larry Pfeffer uh, in 2007. He organized uh, conferences of beacons in the dark in the Hebrew, Hebrew University in Jerusalem. Maybe you have been here. I have been there. I don't know. Um. <clears throat> Now, Larry's told me about it, and I've read he's very, Larry is very, very um, passionate about uh, um, people that helped um, the unsung heroes, and even those heroes that uh, that helped uh, helped save the uh, Jews, and um, both Jewish and non-Jewish. Yeah, it was about the rescuers, uh, the Jewish rescuers uh, in the Holocaust. Uh, and uh, 
this one is called Help from the New World. Uh, it is a very complex uh, historical uh, event as well in my painting. Uh, I received a description, uh, written description of this event from uh, Larry Pfeffer, uh, and according to that, uh, uh, we made together, in fact, we worked together on, it is a historical illustration. Hello, Lisa, can I ask you, in this painting, I think you depict Hillel Cook from the Bergson Group, together with the March of the Rabbis on Washington. Yes. In, in 19, I think it was 1943, when the Rabbis marched on Washington. Yes. And unfortunately, Roosevelt, he didn't, he didn't come out to meet them. But it was yes. a very famous uh, March of the Rabbis on Washington to, um, to protest what was going on in Europe. And it was a plea for help. From yes. The president and the president didn't have the time to meet with him. And Hillel Cook, he was, he was the one very instrumental in organizing this very famous march. Yes, Hillel Cook, yes. He depicted this absolutely incredibly. It is so, it's so real. It's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Yeah. Well, it is in the foreground, the White House and the rabbis and Hillel Cook. And in background, there is uh, Raoul Wallenberg. I'm sorry, I don't remember now the names. I think Montello, Montello yes. could be young. And Recha yes. Sternbach, I think the, the lady could be Recha Sternbach. Yes. And uh, Holocaust, uh, Budapest, here the river, uh, Danube. Well, the and, one could also be Karl Lutz, either it's uh, Karl Lutz or it could be. Um, uh, Montello, it's hard to tell, but it's... Yeah, well, Montello, this is uh, the another, this is the second painting. Uh -huh. yeah. So I think in the first one it was Karl Lutz, Karl Lutz and, uh, and Raoul Wallenberg. Yeah, this is called the Switzerland Awakens. So anyway, in this painting, uh, as you said, this uh, uh, March of the Rabbis, this began to awaken the Americans that they should do something uh, about uh, the Nazis. They, until then, they uh, didn't uh, want to get involved in Europe. It was a lot Hilal Cook. Hilal yeah. Cook and, uh, and um, the Bergson Group. He created the Bergson Group. Mm -hmm. So the another uh, awakening was uh, in Switzerland about, uh, about uh, the uh, about what's happening, uh, the, about the concentration camps, because they didn't want to know uh, either. I think here you have Weissmandel. There's a picture of the Rabbi Weissmandel and I think Rekha Sternberg. Weissmandel and Gizzi Fleischmann in Bratislava. Uh, and here is the pastor uh, in Switzerland, I don't remember his name, sorry. I, I have the text and... Uh, sorry, I well enough <laughs> for this <laughs> presentation. Uh, but uh, I have it in my computer. Uh, the, well, this was in 2007 when I uh, made this. And since then, uh, more or less, I didn't uh, come back to these complex historical uh, connections. Anyway, uh, they began to publish about uh, the whole of the concentration camps uh, because of this uh, uh, reform or reform pastor who began to publish it, uh, not Catholic. In Switzerland, they are not Catholics. Uh, so they began to do demonstrations then. It was, uh, Hannah Lisa, it was published in, in 400 newspapers in Switzerland. And, and, be, and then the world became aware because the Swiss papers actually published 
the Auschwitz protocols. Yeah. And because they published it, so much pressure was put on Horty that they, they stopped the deportations. Yeah. It had it's a tremendous, a tremendous very, very complex. So until they uh, began to do something, it was already in 1944, already. Yeah. Okay, well. So anyway, uh, so this is one of my one of the uh, last sketches, in fact, which deal with Holocaust, which I made for the request of Larry Pfeffer. Uh, it is still in the sketch form. We didn't go on yet. It is very complex as well for him, probably as well. Uh, and it is about the Jewish rescuers as well. So here I am showing just these sketches. That uh, in my artwork, I have to come back again and again to this heritage of my, of the Holocaust. Though uh, a big part of my artwork, I did other things as well. I am not showing them here. Only one painting I am showing from my other, and this is the last one, which I am showing here. And this I made uh, 2005. Uh, it is called Opening the Gate of Mercy. And uh, this is uh, the fifth painting in the series, which I painted uh, uh, of uh, Heavenly Jerusalem. Uh, the illustrations of visions of Dr. Hayutman from Jerusalem. Uh, uh, who, who asked me to illustrate his visions of the, of the heavenly Jerusalem and the third temple. This is uh, the fifth vision, which was my vision, opening the gate of mercy. As you see in this photo, mm -hmm. the eastern gate to the temple mount in Jerusalem is walled in. Right? Yeah. You know. Yeah. And there's a cemetery. Hmm? I think there's, there's, a, the, the, there's a cemetery. They put a cemetery because... Yeah. There is a Muslim cemetery because uh, I think 300 years ago, the Muslims, who the Turks, like uh, they were in Jerusalem, they walled in the gate because they didn't want the Christian Messiah to go through it or the Jewish Messiah. That's true. And they because according to the mythos or legend, the Messiah in the end days is supposed to go through this gate, to come through this gate. And that's why there is a big uh, Jewish cemetery on the uh, uh, opposing the, the hill. Uh, Haraz, uh, it's called Haraz the, yeah. the Mount of Olives. Yeah. And um, just I'll just quickly mention Hanaliza, my, my late mother, Alava Shalom, was buried there, and we just finished the Shloshim. She's buried on Haraz together with my grandmother. Yeah. And it overlooks. It overlooks the Harabait. It's amazing. It's a big schut. It's a big honor to be buried there. Yeah. So one of my paintings of this series, uh, which I'm not showing here, uh, but you can see that one uh, on Facebook now, or if you open, uh, 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 if you print my name, Annalisa Omer, in Google, they show it there as well. I don't have a website now, right now. <laughs> anyway, in this painting, I virtually opened 
the gate of mercy. I mean, the mother is opening with her healing hand. The healing hand and the hearts, the growing hearts are growing out into the infinite through the gate of mercy. This is the vision. Uh, in fact, I painted this painting uh, as it was uh, in 2005, there were no trees in the cemetery. But lately, what is interesting, I am joking about it that because I opened it, the gate virtually, it is a joke, of course, but <laughs> anyway, there are invasive species of trees wildly growing from these tombs. It is called in Latin, Ailantus altissima, this species of trees. All over the world invasive, in Israel and in Prague as well. Uh, anyway, they are growing out of it. Uh, two years ago, I went there, I saw that uh, the authorities uh, uh, of the Muslim uh, uh, keepers of the cemetery tried to burn these uh, trees and, uh, and uh, yeah, burn because to pull out, they cannot pull them out because uh, they grow out of the graves. See. the tombs so to cut them and but they are still growing <laughs> it is incredible so if you go there today for a walk it is possible because there are guards uh, up here there you see the guards they are watching very well <laughs> so nothing happens so it is possible to go there you will see trees are go growing so two years ago, I had here in Prague exhibition uh, called Connection Prague-Jerusalem. Uh, and uh, it was in a, a Hussit, uh, Hussit prayer house. Uh, and uh, I showed these paintings of mine of uh, Heavenly Jerusalem and my paintings of Prax as well, which I am doing lately. So I had to update this painting. Mm. So I had to put there these trees. I had to paint their trees, update it. <laughs> so anyway, this is kind of a more optimistic ending to, to my presentation. And Hannah Lisa, I just want to mention, you know, it's a, it's very, very appropriate that you end off with this beautiful, incredibly inspirational, magnificent painting of the opening of the gate of mercy with the healing. Mm -hmm. And it was through your art of the healing of the images of your both your parents that, that gave you the healing um, as a second generation Holocaust survivor. Yeah. So it's just amazing how you have, amazing isn't even the right word. It is incredible. You're magnificent. You are so gifted and so talented and your art is so real. And what you've depicted in your art, you actually feel that you're part of it. You have a tremendous gift, Eliza. And Eliza, it's, it's just, it's really, really exceptionally special what you've done. And you've done it not only to capture the essence of your, your, who your parents were and what they related to you and what you heard, but you've done it also as a therapeutic to heal yourself and your family. And I think this is something very unique and absolutely unbelievable. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. So, Annalisa, I really want to thank you. I'm, I must tell you, your art is just... You know, especially today when you when you read about the Shoah and it's it's so emotional and people some people can't handle it because it's too heavy, it's too unimaginable. 
the horrors and the, the destruction and the devastation. And when you hear people's accounts, and I have the great scoop to interview Holocaust survivors, and it's very, very difficult for the, the survivor to speak about it, but sometimes through speaking about it, it's also a type of therapy that they can relate and people are interested to hear. But what you've done is you've made it come alive. You really have made it come alive and you've depicted it in such a most realistic and unbelievable manner. It's, it's something, you have a tremendous gift. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing. You, you gave me, uh, and I thank you, our friend Larry Pfeffer as well, that uh, connected between. Well, I want to thank Larry because Larry was the one that introduced uh, you to me, and he asked me if I could attend your, hmm. your, did your, um, when you were in Jerusalem and you had your exhibition which was beautiful and you gave a presentation which was and I was very fortunate to video it. So I really I'm extremely grateful to Larry for um, for making the introduction and for encouraging me in, in what I do and also for opening up my eyes to the rescuers. Larry's been a, a, he's a tremendous pr tremendous passion for for acknowledging and relating the great heroism of those who rescued. And uh, I think you, your paintings and what you've done, you're just augmenting his work. You really are. But Hannah Lisa, I just want to ask you before we leave, um, you know, what message do you give to your children into the future generation? What, what message, you know, your painting is, is a message. It's a most beautiful message. But do you have a message or what would you like to tell, or what do you tell your, your children and your grandchildren and for future generations. What did I tell her? What? What, what, what message? What, what, message, what message do I have? To your children, your grandchildren, to future generations. What life advice can you give, having come from Holocaust survivors, having experienced what you experienced? What advice can you give to the, the future generations? Well, uh, my daughter and my son were born in Israel. They still uh, have uh, some of the, the psychological difficulties uh, uh, which are connected to our family heritage. But my grandchildren, uh, my daughter has seven children, Baruch Hashem, thank God, in, in Israel. They are already Israel and they are free. My son has uh, here in Prague three children. And uh, they, uh, as well, they are already a new generation. They, 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 thank God, they don't suffer anymore as, for instance, we did emotionally. So, I, my message is just what I can show them and I hope they will read my mother's memoirs <laughs> and uh, keep on remembering, keep on remembering, yes. Remembering and uh, opening new joyful life, opening the gate of mercy. That's what I wish for us. Wow. Well, Hanaliza, I really, I want to thank you so very much. It's been a tremendous honor and a privilege to, to have, you know, to, to hear and to see your just unbelievable, incredible, your work, which you put so much of your body and your soul in. You can see it comes from the heart. Your art isn't art. It's, 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 it's more than art. It's your, the history of your family, and you depicted it in such the most unbelievable with, with color and with but you, the message is there. And I wish it could go into a book and everybody can see it. But you know, having it on on, on a video maybe would be it's actually even better because now everybody all over the world can see this and they can appreciate 
the most amazing talent that you have and how you've directed it into the most important and, and just holy. You wrote Kadosh, 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 and this is what you've done. It's really, it's holy, holy. It's extremely holy what you've done. And you know, let this be for your parents. May their memories be for eternal blessing. And and you really, they are, they, I know, they are really very proud of what you are doing because you, you've really depicted their life and their suffering and, and their aspirations and what they've, they've achieved so beautifully in your artwork. Thank you very much. So, Elisa, thank you so much and just wishing you all the very best. And we'd love to see you when you come to Israel. And uh, please, God, we'll have more exhibitions in Israel as well. Thank you, dear. And uh, Shavua Tov. Okay, and all the very best to you. And uh, I would like to finish with uh, a prayer for healing, which our world globally needs now. And uh, it is the prayer, Ana Elna Refana Na. Ana Elna Refana Na. Which means, please, God, heal her. And this is the first prayer in the Bible, in the Torah. It is the prayer of Moses for his sister when she got uh, sick uh, with uh, epilepsy. Or... It was the leprosy. She had le like a type of leprosy. Yeah, yeah, leprosy. Uh, Anna Elna Refanala, uh, it, or Elna Refanala, that's how it is in the Bible. The, the shortest prayer and the most powerful. So, Elna Refanala. Annalisa, thank you so much. And just in good health, and you should just have Nachas. And um, really, you should just have all of Hashem's blessings, which you so deserve for you and your family, and really, from the bottom of our hearts, from both Larry and myself, we really want to thank you, really. Thank you very much. Toda Rabbah. Brother Hitrod, we'll see you, please God, soon in Israel. Toda.